Imagine though, time traveling all the way back to when Bitcoin was just a fraction mm, of the price that it's at right now, and then buying it, that'd have been pretty cool. <laughs> I realize I've done that trick so many times. Still cool though, let's begin. Hi, my name is Andre Jake. Hope you're doing well. And today we're discussing my top 10 cryptocurrency holdings in my crypto portfolio. Please remember that there is a lot of cryptocurrencies that I'm sure are great projects that I just don't own, which I'm sure in the future I'll wish I had owned that I just don't know about today. And also keep this one rule of thumb in mind. And that is that you should never hold more than 10% of your net worth in this asset class. Now, unfortunately, most people don't understand why cryptocurrency is useful or why it has value. And I can't answer that question unless you understand exactly how money works, how we make it, and who controls it. But all I'll say is, whatever you do, don't Google the creature from Jekyll Island. Now, before leaving your thoughts and comments, please understand that some of the coins I have in my crypto portfolio I got for free as a result of chain splits. Now, if you don't know what a chain split is, I will attempt to explain it now with this uh, Bitcoin right here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna do that trick again. But it's basically when you hold a cryptocurrency that goes through what's called a fork. And there are two types of forks. There is a soft fork and a hard fork. This is a hard fork because it's hard. And this is a soft fork right here. It's almost like a software upgrade because we're changing the molecular structure of the metal itself and we're upgrading the software and bending the metal. And that's what that looks like. Now that's a soft fork. A hard fork creates two totally different types of blockchains with two totally different types of rule sets. And that's exactly what creates aya, the chain split which is also kind of like a stock split, except in this case, it creates two unique coins. Their total value is usually the sum of what the original coin was, but not necessarily evenly. So a $10,000 coin can be split, and the split can be worth $5 on one end, and on the other end could still be worth 9,995. This depends largely on which chain has the most proof of work. Now, usually this happens when the cryptocurrency internally has a disagreement on how the network should be upgraded. Kind of like when Vegito separates into Goku and Vegeta because they can never agree on anything. Yeah, Goku. I had to throw in my King Kai in there somewhere. Completely irrelevant. Anyway, when this happens like it did to Ethereum, and you ended up owning Ethereum on the blockchain, the day of the split, you will end up with both Ethereum Classic and Ethereum. Almost like a special dividend that gets paid to you, which you can either sell for more money, you can keep and maybe watch it grow, or equally probable, you can just watch it go down all the way to zero and be worthless because crypto be like that sometimes though. Anyway, that's what a chain split is, how it works, and why I might have some strange cryptocurrencies in my portfolio that I didn't necessarily buy. So let's kick it off with number 10 on the list, which is the goodest of coins. Dogecoin. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't actually own any Dogecoin, but it's been blowing up on TikTok and knowing the internet, that's going to be the coin that wins in the end. Thanks a lot, Gen Z, you young whippersnappers. No, I'm kidding. I still don't own any Dogecoin, but if you like memes, Dogecoin is the way to go. Coming in at number nine is Bitcoin Gold or BTG. You can think of BTG kind of like Bitcoin, had an unfortunate smelting accident. Now it's one of the forks or one of the chain splits off of Bitcoin. And what they did was they changed the original mining algorithm from SHA-256, which is ASIC based, which is argued that it's controlled by large corporations, which has in turn made Bitcoin more centralized. Therefore, they changed it to Equihash, which is more of a graphics processor based mining algorithm. That means that people like you and I, normal people can access it and mine it a lot easier. Also, I realized that none of that made any sense to you. So just think of BTG, Bitcoin Gold, kind of like Bitcoin, just a lot easier to mine. And number eight is Litecoin. Now, if Bitcoin is digital gold, then Litecoin is digital silver. Now, unlike Bitcoin, it doesn't use the SHA-256 cryptographic algorithm. Instead, it uses something called Script, which is supposed to be simpler. Also, unlike Bitcoin, which has a maximum supply of coins of 21 million, Litecoin has maximum supply of 84 million. It can do what's called confirming a transaction four times faster faster than Bitcoin, which means it's a lot easier and more practical to use as a real world currency because a lot more people can use it quicker. Coming in at number seven is Flash Flash 100 Yard Dash. Dash combines the words digital plus cash to make Dash. So smart. No, it's got a lot of cool, clever features about it that I really like, like master nodes and democratic voting processes. But the coolest part about Dash to me is a flaw of Bitcoin, 
which Bitcoin does not have this feature. And Dash keeps 10% of its mining profits towards its own network, which means it can basically fund its own upgrades and its own operations and become self-sufficient. That means it's protected from being bought out by external corporate interests. Because the last thing you want when creating a digital world currency is for somebody like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Visa, MasterCard to step in and be like, how can I invest? And then they put their dirty claws on it and then they change the whole thing. So the fact that it funds itself is a feature for me worth speculating on. And coming in at number six, is Ripple. Now, Ripple probably has one of the most convoluted stories in my entire portfolio, so I'm not gonna get into it. But basically, it's used to transfer a ton of money from one bank to another bank instantaneously for basically free, and it's used mostly by the banks. Now, if you know anything about the derivatives market, which I don't, then this would be a huge use of the Ripple network, but that has a lot of caveats, and I'm not gonna get into them today. My investment with Ripple is kind of like a hedge against a hedge if the current banking system wins this race of global currency domination. And coming in at number five is a really interesting coin and it's called IOTA. Now, unlike the rest of the crypto space, IOTA does not use the blockchain. Instead, it uses something called the Tangle. Not to be confused with Tangled, very important distinction, but the cool thing about the Tangle is that when we get quantum computing, if it ever happens in our lifetime, the SHA-256 cryptographic algorithm that powers Bitcoin would break and Bitcoin would just disintegrate and stop existing. In the case of the Tangle in IOTA, we would just still continue functioning just as fine. The downside to this though, is that right now IOTA is highly centralized by its creators. And because it is so technologically convoluted and advanced with all of the internet of things and the machine to machine economy, it has a lot of attack vectors. So I would say out of all the cryptocurrencies in my portfolio, I would say this one has the least chance of success. But if it happens, it would be super cool. And because of its out of the box thinking, I still have some money in it. And coming in at number four is Bitcoin Satoshi Vision or BSV. Out of all the chains and forks from Bitcoin, this one is probably my least favorite because the success of this coin is so largely dependent on the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto and who he is, which is being claimed by a particular individual, which I won't mention because it's high school drama that I don't follow. And I've just kept it in my portfolio after the fork because you never know, but I got them for free and I never actually bought any. Number three is a very big one and that is Bitcoin Cash. Now Bitcoin Cash was born from a dispute where it forked off of the original chain and the two powerful factions within Bitcoin disagreed with each other about what Bitcoin was meant to be. Was Bitcoin meant to be a new paradigm that changed the world by being the new world reserve currency that all of us could use? Or maybe it was meant to be a digital gold, a store of value, and maybe something like a PayPal 3.0. But they each have their own scaling solutions where the original Bitcoin BTC wants to scale off chain on a separate layer and Bitcoin Cash wants to scale on layer by increasing the block size. Also, I realized that probably none of that made any sense, but I really don't know which one is better and maybe in a few years we will find out. But what I do know is that I own both. And coming in at number two is the OG heavy hitter, Bitcoin. I bought some back in 2014 for $600 per coin and I sold it for a loss two years later because I'm stupid and I will never underestimate the power of the honey badger ever again. But at this point, Bitcoin is sort of like a religion. There is always going to be somebody left to buy Bitcoin. But the truth is, in the next five to 10 years from now, Bitcoin will probably be the best performing asset in the world, better than real estate, better than stocks. And in five to 10 years from now, Bitcoin will be worth closer to $100,000 or $0, but probably nothing in between. And at number one is of course, Ethereum. Ethereum is awesome. I've always been a big fan of Ethereum, but I've only started owning some until very recently. I bought some at $200, about like $25,000 worth, and it's really paid off. But that's not really the point, because I think the smartest developers are working on Ethereum, on things like dApps or decentralized apps, on DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, which are basically companies that have no CEOs or management. They just kind of exist and they do things, kind of like the internet. The order of all these cryptocurrencies was ranked 
ranked in terms of least to most in terms of dollar amount. So Bitcoin gold is what I have the least amount of money in and Ethereum is what I have the most amount of money in. My number two, my Ethereum and Bitcoin are within a couple hundred dollars of each other, so they're very close. The total value of my entire portfolio is $66,454.33, but it fluctuates a couple thousand dollars here and there. And I've seen my portfolio go as low as $12,000 and I've seen it go as high as $111,000. So if cryptocurrency has taught me anything, it's taught me exactly how money works, who makes it, who controls it, and it's taught me the emotional strength to handle any ups and downs and volatility in the stock market. So the next time I see my dividend stock portfolio go up and down a couple thousand dollars, it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm already scarred for life and I've built up an immunity. And that's the other most important thing that I've learned about cryptocurrency, the end game, which isn't to hold Bitcoin and then sell it for a million dollars like some people have, which is great. The point of Bitcoin is to hold on to it until it becomes the new world standard. And Bitcoin or something like it will eventually become that, much like we went from gold to cash, from cash to credit cards, credit cards to digital, and now digital to cryptocurrency. Even though crypto and digital are very similar, the point of crypto is to give control back to the people rather than giving up that control to the government, the corporation, and the banks. The downside though to this entire revolution is that people want to steal this money. In fact, the other day we had 336 Bitcoins stolen from an exchange. It's not because the blockchain itself was hacked, but instead it's because the exchange was hacked or the private keys were stolen or the wallet was stolen or negligence of an employee, just like what happened to Michael Turpin, who had $24 million stolen as a result of a SIM swap scam, where a bunch of kids called AT&T pretending to be Michael Turpin. They got his SIM card, plugged it into their phone, and they were able to log in to all his crypto accounts and they stole that money. Of course, Michael sued AT&T for $224 million and won, which is insane. The human in me is like, Wow, I'm glad he won. The dividend investor in me is like, bruh, I'm an investor in AT&T and that's gonna hurt my dividends. So to protect yourself from scams and thefts, if you wanna start investing, there are two rules that you have to follow. And the first one is, if you have 2FA, two-factor authentication enabled on your phone, call your phone company and tell them to never send you or ship you a replacement SIM card unless you're there to request it in person. And make sure to record that phone call so you have evidence in case you also get an employee who didn't follow through. The second rule of thumb is not your keys, not your crypto. He who wields the key, is the G. I don't know what that means, but basically, if you don't know that long string of numbers, technically, you don't control your cryptocurrency. The best example of this is Robinhood. Even though theoretically you can trade cryptocurrency, buy and sell on Robinhood, technically, you don't actually own your Bitcoin and crypto on Robinhood. It's on their wallet, it's in their exchange, and if you wanted to move your cryptocurrency off of Robinhood and put it into another exchange or another wallet, you cannot do that as of right now. Even though on their website it says they want to include this feature in the future, that's been the case for a while now and they still haven't changed it. For now, on Robinhood, you do not control your crypto. And when this becomes really important is when that chain split happens, like I explained in the beginning of the video, because you are owed both of these coins. But if you hold your money in Robinhood's wallet, they may withhold your forked coins indefinitely for a number of reasons. Of course, because the internet, Robinhood would probably get eaten alive and that would probably never happen because they're reputable. But a different company that cares less about protecting their reputation might disagree. And that's another reason why you should consider it. Because if you wanna protect your cryptocurrency, you need to get yourself one of these. This is a hardware wallet or also known as cold storage, which will hold most of your crypto needs on this thing. If somebody burns it, drowns it, crushes it, you'll still be able to access your cryptocurrency if you remember or wrote down your key phrases which are included in this, which is almost impossible to hack. It's possible, but it's highly, highly improbable, especially if you hide it somewhere, like in your palm. Please do this once you reach $1,000 worth of cryptocurrency. Again, I'm not gonna sell you on a specific one. There's a ton of great ones out there, but whatever you do, don't keep a substantial amount of money on the exchanges because that's where it gets stolen. Whichever crypto wins in this crazy race, we all win because the power of money is given back to us, the people, instead of the government and the banks. 
And if I disappear after this video, be very sus. And of course, if you haven't done so already and you want to start investing, please make an account with Webull. You'll get one free stock valued up to $250. Fund that account, $100. Don't forget to do that. You'll get another free stock valued up to $1,400. Get your third free stock from Robinhood. You can also follow me on Instagram. I post there from time to time. I may or may not leave a link to my Discord, which I just made. It's really cool. Love you all. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.